Hello mortals. Pause the video and think of a number between 1 and 1 million. I'll think of one too. Mine is 765,432. Unless this video has millions of views, it is highly unlikely that any of you thought of the same number as I did. But if our numbers matched, it is very probable that there is a reason for it, be it you reading my digital mind or having peaked to know the number beforehand. But if you didn't cheat, that would make the outcome finely tuned. Very similarly, we shall argue that life in the universe is finely tuned as well, but even to a bigger degree than the number experiment. Thanks to Blinkist for sponsoring this video. Life might not seem like the most exciting and unique thing to have happened to someone who has experienced it their entire life. You had so much of school, work, sleep, food, memes, cat, dog, pain, fun, pain, 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 that none of them seem to be anything special. But when you get to calculate the chances of the universe evolving in such a way to allow for the formation of Earth and the evolution of life that would eventually result in the existence of you in a span of billions of years, you will be left with a bittersweet taste of existential angst. But let's start with the big picture. How likely was it for life to develop in our universe? At the moment of this video, we have not yet made contact with any forms of life other than those on Earth. There probably are thousands or even millions of civilizations in our galaxy alone, but for some reason that is outside the scope of this video, they seem to be hard to detect. Regardless, humanity is enough proof to show that the universe is hospitable for life. But what were the chances? For our universe, there have been defined six physical constants that don't seemingly have a reason behind their value. If every property of the universe should in the end be explainable, these six constants seem to have arbitrary values, unaffected by any physical forces. Epsilon, the measure of the nuclear efficiency of fusion from hydrogen to helium, is 0.007. If it were a bit lower, the universe would only be filled with hydrogen as it wouldn't be able to fuse, and conversely, if it were higher, all the hydrogen would fuse into diprotons, making complex chemistry impossible in each case. One other such variable is the number of spatial dimensions in the universe, which is 3, unless you take random pills you found on the table at the party. If there were 2 or 4 spatial dimensions, and anything other than one time dimension, life would not be able to exist. Note that this is about large-scale dimensions and does not prevent the 11 dimensions of the string theory. Another constant, omega, which is the ratio of the mass density of the universe to the critical density, if it would be different than approximately 1, the universe would have collapsed through a big crunch, or expand too rapidly to allow for the formation of stars, both before any life could have evolved. The cosmological constant lambda, which is on the order of 10 to the power of negative 112, describes the ratio of the dark energy density to the critical energy density of the universe. It is so small that it has no significant effect on cosmic structures that are smaller than a billion light-years across. But a slightly larger value of the cosmological constant would have caused space to expand rapidly enough that stars would once again not be able to form. And yet, here you are, advanced primates that learn to communicate with long-dead ancestors. Not through Ouija boards, but through books. Maybe René Descartes put it in a better way. The reading of all good books is like a conversation with the finest minds of past centuries. Feel like having such conversations? Blinkist got you covered. Dive into Descartes, meditations on first philosophy, Aristotle's, art of rhetoric, Nietzsche's, beyond good and evil, and hundreds of other timeless masterpieces. And best of all, they are carefully digested into 10-minute summaries, so you don't have to worry about spending centuries on wrapping your head around the convoluted and complex language they used. Aside from this, you'll get access to thousands of other educational titles and 27 categories of the world's best knowledge to choose from. This is a great opportunity to broaden your knowledge on any topic that you lack the time to deeply research into by yourself, it's all there ready for you now. The first 100 people to go to Blinkist.com slash science file are going to get unlimited access for one week to try it out. You'll also get 25% off if you want the full membership. Hurry up. Back to the video. At the beginning of the universe, there used to be an equal amount of matter and antimatter, which should have annihilated each other completely and left nothing behind. 
However, due to some mysterious mechanism, about 1 in 10 billion antimatter particles would transform into normal matter, thus letting the latter come out on top in this extermination. These 1 in 10 billion particles now make up everything that we can see, and were it not for that mechanism, no matter would exist in the universe. From the looks of it, it seems to be that there are quite a few constants that are carefully adjusted to generate this exact universe that would allow for life to exist. If any were to be slightly different, you can forget about the current laws of physics, the need to wake up early in the morning and the responsibilities of a human being in the modern society. When put this way, it doesn't sound like the worst of things. But the question still stands, why is the universe so apparently perfect for us? Is that proof of the workings of some divine being? Or is it purely chance and luck? A useful tool to help us is the anthropic principle. In basic terms, it claims that the universe is perfect for conscious life, because if it weren't, there would be no one to observe it. So only a universe that allows for life to exist would be able to hold observers, and any other configurations of the universe would exist without ever being observed. In a way similarly to the philosophical question, if a tree falls in a forest and no one is around to hear it, does it make a sound? We can ask, if a universe that will never be observed exists, does it actually exist? And what are the explanations for us ending up in such a universe? Maybe everything is absurd, and the universe just happens to be as it is without any reason, we just got incredibly lucky for it to be perfect for us. Or maybe there is a fundamental reason inside of physics that requires the universe to be this way. Perhaps it was intelligently designed to allow for the existence of life by some kind of deity or a simulation by advanced aliens. But that would just push back the problem one layer above. Or maybe the multiverse theory is correct, and that would mean that all the possible universes with every combination of the initial parameters exists, and we're only in those that allow us to. This would be a case of the survivorship bias. Based on our observations alone, 100% of the universes are hospitable for life, since all the others would not be observable due to their inability to host life. Similarly, we can use the same reasoning for the apparent perfection of Earth for humans. It's not that the Earth was made perfect for humans, it's that humans evolved to be perfect for the Earth. Life is like the water that fills a pothole. It's not the pothole that's shaped perfectly to fit the water, but rather the water shapes itself in the form of the pothole which is our universe. 